Time for the big story. And the Sun newspaper report that a Tory minister has called for Boris Johnson to make a shock comeback into government. Andrew Griffith suggested the ex-PM could be a secret weapon in taking on Sakir Starmer in an election campaign, telling LBC Radio he's a strong voice that would have Keir Starmer running scared. Allies of Johnson want Rishi Sunak to give Johnson a peerage so he can be brought into the cabinet like David Cameron. Meanwhile, in an interview with ITV News, the prime minister himself refused to rule out a return to the political front line for his former colleague, with Sunak adding, I'm proud of the work that Boris and I did together and we worked well together for a long time. So could recruiting Boris Johnson save Rishi Sunak's political fortunes? Kwasi Kwarteng certainly thinks so. He spoke to Camilla Tomine this morning on GB News. If you want somebody's help, you should reach out to them. Yes. That's what you would do. Yes. If you were in a difficult spot and you wanted a friend to help you or somebody to help you, yeah. you would probably well, pick up the phone. Well, he might not admit that he needs well, the there's help all of that ego. There's all of that ego and, and nonsense. It's not time simply to more, more, you know, more of the same. No. Something has to change for us to have a chance of winning. And if that means swallowing uh, some pride and you know, suppressing a bit of ego and reaching out to someone who's an approved campaigner, yeah. then he should do that. So should Boris enter the cabinet and return to frontline politics to save Sunak's skin? Let's ask top biographer and journalist Tom Bauer, whose best-selling book about Boris Johnson is called The Gambler and is out now. Tom, great to see you again. Uh, do you think that Boris should have a crack at frontline politics once again? Would, would he relish a return to the cabinet, for example? I'm sure he would relish it, be called back from the wilderness like Winston Churchill. The problem is, though that he is so vulnerable because he was kicked out of Parliament, accused and convicted of lying. And he did pretty badly at the COVID inquiry. He looked like mm. a broken man. And he'd be so vulnerable to Labour attacks that I don't think that for very much of the time he'd be a great asset. And I think there are two other problems with Boris. I don't think he's come to terms yet why he lost office. I mean, there's the man who won this phenomenal 80-seat majority in 2019. He made Keir Starmer at that time unelectable, and everything has gone upside down. And he hasn't come to terms and doesn't understand why he failed. So I think he'd find it very difficult to take to the road, especially when he wasn't very impressive in the COVID inquiry. And that's really the problem. I don't think the old Boris is there yet. He may recover, but he's not there yet. And it's an interesting question, isn't it, Tom, about whether Boris would help or hinder Sunak on the campaign trail? There has to be a concern he might overshadow the PM. Well, I think that's true. I mean, he's pretty exuberant. And the problem is that Boris is not a team player. He would not want to accept that he is actually subject to what Sunak wants. He'd go off on a tangent. And that makes him a pretty unreliable person at this time. I mean, Sunak is in the position he's in because he's blown every opportunity of setting up a proper Tory manifesto, low taxes and all the rest of it. He and Jeremy Hunt seem intent on keeping taxation far too high and not presenting a vision other than banning smoking for children, which seems to be not on everyone's thoughts at the moment. So I don't know what Boris would actually contribute other than being a distraction. Indeed, and I guess uh, Boris is probably enjoying making some money now, Tom, and being a free man. Well, of course he's enjoying. He's spending a fortune on his home, and he's got lots more children and all the rest of it. But I'm sure he hankers to be back in the spotlight. There's nothing he'd like more mm. than a call from Sunak to say, please come and save me. Uh, what his reaction would be, though, would be, I'll save you on my terms. And those terms undoubtedly wouldn't suit Rishi Sunak. The problem is it's been hasn't been enough time to, for Boris to actually calm down and take stock, understand what he did wrong and come back with a fresh mandate and as a different person. He's still, unfortunately, the person who is angry with everybody and blames everybody for his own folly. Tom, of course, it was Rishi Sunak's resignation as chancellor that saw the collapse of Johnson's premiership. Is there still bad blood between the two of them, do you think? Absolutely. I'm sure that's the right part of the problem. Boris blames everybody but himself. But you've got to remember that the reason that Sunak called it a day 
was after uh, Pincher was proven to have uh, uh, been guilty of this sin and Boris lied about it. And there was a constant drip of apologies because of the parties and everything else. Boris, every day he appeared, every time he appeared at the dispatch box in the Commons, apologised. He became the best apologist in British politics. He never actually got on with governing Britain. And many of the problems we're facing today all occurred because Boris didn't fix Brexit. Boris didn't get rid of woke Britain. He didn't get rid of all the civil servants who were undermining the Tory government. I mean, he failed as a prime minister, having succeeded in that brilliant election coup. So it's very hard to see what he would bring to the party other than being a great rabble rouser for a little short period before he's called out again.